Let us talk about the book colleagues and the club. The book colleagues and the club. The book of and the clocks are terms deployed to denote pastoral poetry in the Greek and Roman tradition respectively. The book of and the clocks are used to den denote pastoral poetry in the Greek and the Roman tradition respectively. The Bucalyx was practiced by Theocritus The Bucolix was practiced by Theocritus, T H E O C R I T U S, Theocritus. While the clock was practiced by Virgil, while the clock was practiced by Virgil. Virgil is spelled V I R G I L. Virgil. So both terms, as I said, denotes pastoral poetry. Pastoral poetry Pastoral poetry refers to a type of poetry that depicts the lives of shepherds in a rural environment. The type of poetry that depicts the lives of shepherds in a rural environment. So you note two features, two important features in the discussion of classical pastoral poetry. One is the depiction of the humble lives of shepherds. And two is the depiction of the natural environment which is idealized. The depiction of the natural environment which is idealized. So the natural environment is idealized because it is it is denoted as the ideal, ideal. In fact, there's a form of pastoral poetry that is known as the ideal in terms of the adoration of the environment. 
the environment, the natural environment is seen to be perfect. All right? The perfect place for man to stay. And it is usually contradicted or set against the noise, the chaos, and the confusion that exist in urban centers. Usually contradicted and set against the noise, the chaos, and the confusion that exists in urban centers, in cities. In fact, it should be noted that in the Renaissance tradition, in the, tradi in the, in the Renaissance tradition, the pastoral was motivated by the need for city poets, a need for city poets to recall the peace and tranquility that existed in the rural areas as against the noise pollution in the city space where they lived. So the pastoral tradition was born out of nostalgia for the peace and the tranquility in the rural area. The pastoral tradition was born out of the writer's nostalgia for the peace and the tranquility that existed in the city. The writer who stayed in the city was not comfortable with the noise and other forms of pollution in the city and so writes and so wrote the pastoral poetry as a way of coping with the chaos in the city and remembering and longing after the peace and tranquility, the serenity in the rural environment. So it must be noted that the pastoral poetry is usually set in a, a rural environment, a natural environment. The pastoral poetry has a rustic setting. Pastoral poetry has a rustic setting. Set in a rural environment, in the village. Some people call it the countryside. We call it the countryside. Set in the villages, in the countryside. And this countryside is idealized. That means seen as a perfect place for man to stay. The pastoral poetry is a humble verse form. Pastoral poetry is a humble verse form. Pastoral poetry is a humble verse form. It is the other end of the epic. It is the other end of the epic and can be so contrasted at many levels. It is the other end of the epic and can be so contrasted at 
many levels. For one, the pastoral poetry is shorter than the epic. The pastoral poetry is shorter than the epic. The pastoral poetry does not aim to be universal like the epic. The pastoral poetry does not aim to be universal like the epic. The pastoral poetry does not aim to be universal like the epic. The pastoral poetry is set in a rural environment. The epic is set in an urban center, in a city space, in the metropolis. Whereas the pastoral poetry is set in a province. The pastoral poetry has humble characters in it. Pastoral poetry has humble characters in it. The epic has characters of high standing in society. So if you're asked to compare the epic and pastoral poetry, you should have enough points to write. The characters in the epic are highly placed members of society. The characters in pastoral poetry are humble shepherds, people at the lower rung of society. The epic depicts the actions of great men, heroes in their own rights, who do miraculous things. Pastoral poetry depicts the action of small men who only care for their sheep. The only thing they know to do is to care for their sheep. Their primary duty is to care for their sheep. They don't know much about war and other heroic actions. They only know how to care for their sheep. So in the pastoral poetry, we are likely to come across the depiction of shepherds in a pastoral setting, taking care of their sheep. These shepherds are also called pastors, who take their sheep to the pasture. These shepherds are also called pastors. They are known to take their sheep to the pasture, to the pasture. And of course, that is how your pastors are now known as shepherds, because you are the sheep that they are looking after. So, in the course of taking care of that sheep, in the course of taking care of that sheep, these shepherds also can engage in love affairs. They, they, they primarily love their sheep, but they can also love themselves. So, part of the things of the pastoral poetry is the dramatization of the love that the shepherd has for the sheep, as well as the love that the shepherd has for another human being. Okay? So love is an important thing in the pastoral poetry. Love is an important thing in the pastoral poetry.
Apart from this, apart from this, the shepherds do engage do, do engage in singing competition. The shepherds do engage in singing competition. Apart from this, the shepherds do engage in singing competition. Singing competition. Singing competition. S I N G I N G. Sing. Competition. There's usually a prize to be won. There's usually a prize to be won by the um, by the winning shepherd, and the prizes are drawn from objects in the environment. The prizes are drawn from the objects in the environment. Okay, the prizes are not exotic to the environment, but are drawn from the natural objects in the environment. It can be the prize can be a ship, can be flower, whatever it is, but it has to be drawn from the natural environment. Okay, in the midst of this, you will notice in pastoral poetry the description of the natural environment. You notice the description of the natural environment. In any pastoral poetry, you will definitely notice the description of the natural environment. The vegetation will be described. The, veg the veg vegetation will be described. Vegetation. You will see the depiction of mountains and hills and plains and valleys. You see the depiction of mountains and hills and plains and valleys. The, the, the sun, the moon, the rivers, and the ocean. The depiction of nature, the birds, the animals. And all of these are depicted as beautiful or ideal. Are depicted as beautiful and ideal. The seasons of the year will be depicted like summer, winter, spring, autumn. Because the pastoral poetry pays attention to the natural environment. In the same competition, what do they shepherds sing about? In the same competition, what do the shepherds sing about? They mostly sing about their daily experiences, taking care of their sheep. They mostly sing about their daily experiences, taking care of their sheep. They mostly sing about their love life and how their lovers have treated them, whether kindly or otherwise. They also sing about their love life and how their lovers have treated them, whether kindly or otherwise. In fact, they mostly sing about their existential challenges and the ones that they over overcome. They mostly sing about the existential challenges and the ones that have overcome. 
they sing about that struggle in love and that triumph in love. They sing about the memorable moments they've had with their lovers. They sing about the memorable moments that they've had with their lovers. There is another aspect of the pastoral poetry that we call pastoral elegy. There's another aspect of the pastoral poetry that we call pastoral elegy. The pastoral elegy combines the features of pastoral poetry and that of elegy. Pastoral elegy combines the features of pastoral poetry and those of the elegy. And it is used to mourn the demise of a shepherd. So the pastoral poetry comes in when the shepherd passes away. The pastoral, pastoral elegy comes in when the ship, when a shepherd passes away. When a shepherd goes to be with the Lord. When a shepherd passes on. Or when a shepherd kicks the bucket. So it will be used to extol the virtues of the shepherds while alive. The pastoral elegy will be used, is deployed to extol the virtues of the shepherds while he was alive. It will be used to sing his praises. Even though the elegy, pastoral elegy, has a mournful tone, it is used to reflect on the lie. Of the, that the shepherd lived. The sacrifices that he made for his shepherds. The sacrifices that he made for his shepherds. How he denied himself so that his sheep would, would survive. How he cared for his sheep. But then again, the pastoral elegy also announces the immortality of the shepherd because of his early deeds, or his early good deeds. The pastoral elegy also announces the immortality of the demise shepherd because of his good deeds while alive. The sacrifice to the sheep. He has not only died, he has gained immortality. He has not only died, but he has also gained immortality. That means he not only dies here on earth, but lives forever, either in a heart or in the other world. He lives forever in a heart and lives forever in the other world. The energy can also be used to make statements about the political circumstances of the time. The energy can also be used to make important statements on the political circumstances of the time. The energy can also be used to make important statements on the political circumstances of the time. This means that the elegy is used to speak to the authorities from below. The elegy can be used to speak to the upper class member society, but from below. From below. From below. So 
So the LHA usually goes beyond um, talking about the, how the shepherd cares for the sheep in a natural environment to making important statements about human nature making important statements about human nature and even making political statements about the goings on in society about the goings on in society So those are the features of the uh, of the um, of the pastoral poetry and the pastoral elegy. Those are the features of the pastoral poetry, pastoral elegy. And what we need to do now is to uh, talk about Virgil's Eclogue, which is available to us. We select some. We select some of the some of the poems to talk about, maybe two or so to discuss. I have the completed clocks here translated. In case you want to read, but we want to take just select one. We we'll look at the clock one. Look at the clock one. We have up to ten books or ten o'clock. So we have from a clock one to a clock ten. So we have up to 10 books from a, a clock 1 to a clock 10. So in a, a clock 1, we have two major characters. We have two major characters. They are Belly Bows and Titerus. Who are engaging in a conversation? Who are engaging in a conversation? Of course, this conversation makes the clock dramatic. In the course of the conversation, it tells a story of its own because in drama, conversation usually tells uh, conversations usually tell stories. In clock one, Melibos and Titerus are depicted engaging in a conversation. This conversation reveals many things about the lives of shepherds. This conversation reveals many things about the lives of shepherds. For instance, Melibos speaks of how Titerus lies under the canopy of a beech tree, singing on his pipe. For instance, Melibos speaks of how Titerus lies under the canopy of a beech tree, singing on his pipe. Beech tree, singing on his pipe. Maybe this shepherd is off duty. He has finished taking care of his sheep for the day and is resting. And part of his relaxation is to sing on his pipe under a beech tree. You can see the natural environment being depicted there. The, the, the major imagery one finds in a pastoral poem is visual imagery because of the need to depict a natural environment. 
the major imagery one finds in the pastoral poem is what? Visual imagery because of the need to do what? To depict the natural environment. So that's what you find there. So the action of playing on his pipe is described as wooing the woodland muse on slender reed. It's described, it's described as quotes and unquote. Wooing the woodland muse on slender reed. Wooing the woodland muse on slender reeds. Okay. So wooing means that this the song is a song of persuasion. Probably appease, that appeases the, the gods that is pleasing to the gods, god of poetry. Slender reeds is a metaphor for the pipes through which the song is produced. So this Bible shepherd is skilled in music. And the music helps to ensure the beauty of the environment at the level of sound. Decorates the environment with its beautiful melody. You can imagine how wonderful it is to be in such an environment that particular moment. Melibos also reveals that he is living in the countryside, which is the appropriate setting for a pastoral poetry. Melibos also reveals that he's living in the countryside, which is the appropriate setting of the pastoral poetry. In this a clock, in a clock one, we also have the use of synesthesia. We also have the use of synesthesia. It's the note I, the note I made while reading the poem. You can read yours and also make your note, own note. We have the use of synesthesia. Synesthesia. In the expression, sweet feels. Sweet feels. All right, if you've gone through my notes on selected literary terms, you will have come across synesthesia. They are used all the time. You use it all the time, but you might not know that that's synesthesia. Okay? It refers to displays sensation, describing a particular thing with a sensation that is not usually associated with it. Because for example, if you say the sugar is sweet, that would have been understood. But to describe the feels as sweet is an instance of synesthesia. And it is done all the time. Like sweet music. Loud color. Those are synesthesia. You use it all the time, but you don't know that that's synesthesia. Titus replies that the peace he currently enjoys is the providence of a God to whom he will always be grateful through timely and frequent sacrifice. Titus replies that the peace he currently enjoys is the providence of a God to whom he will always be grateful through timely and frequent sacrifice. I'll take that again. Titus replies that the peace he currently enjoys is the providence of a God to whom he will always be grateful through timely and frequent sacrifice. This is seen in the following words. Often shall a tender lamb from our foes stain his altar. 
often shall a tender lamb from a fold stain his altar. So he acknowledges that what the peace that he enjoys being able to sit down um, under a beach tree to sing music as a form of relaxation on his pipe is because the gods have been favorable to him. And in response, he will appreciate the God by making frequent sacrifices. All right? Often shall a tender lamb from a fold stain his altar, implying that he will always sacrifice to appreciate the God who has made his life so beautiful. Melibo says that he is not jealous of Titus' good fortune, but rather he is anxious about the conflict, the noise and confusion in the world at the moment, at personal and connect collective level. Melibo says that he is not jealous of Titus' good fortune, but rather he is anxious about the conflict, the noise, and the confusion in the world at the moment at personal and collective level. I'll take that again. Melibus says that he's not jealous of Titus' good fortune, but rather he's anxious about the conflict, the noise, and the confusion in the world at the moment, at personal and collective level. So you could see that the pastoral poetry does not only concern itself with the day-to-day -day activities of the shepherds, it can also speak to the occurrences in the world around the shepherds. Some of these occurrences seem to be seem to be far away in the city while the shepherds live in peace and tranquility in the pastoral, in the rural area. Okay? So he goes on to tell Titus that he is heart sick. Melibos goes on to tell Titus that he is heart sick. Heart sick? Sick in the heart, right? He's heart sick as he drives his ship along. He's heart sick as he drives his ship along. Melibos goes on to tell Titus that he is heart sick, he's heartbroken. He's not fine emotionally as he drives his ship along. Okay. One of his sheep has given birth to two lambs, which he refers to as the hope of the flock. One of his sheep. Remember, there's nothing like sheep. All right? Sheep is sheep. Singular, sheep. Plural, sheep. Okay? One sheep, 2,000 sheep. All right? One million sheep. Okay, so that you know, because there are many, you now say, how can there be so many and still remain cheap? So you now say 2,000 ships. Okay. One of the ship has given birth to two lambs, which he refers to as, quote and unquote, the hope of the flock. That's a metaphor. That means from, from these two lambs, more sheep will be coming. The hope of the flock. That's a metaphor. Which he refers to as, quote and unquote, the hope of the flock. Flock is spelled F-L-O-C-K. Then he asked, he asked Titus of the God that has blessed him so much. Melibos asks Titus to tell him about the God 
that has blessed him so much. Tell me about the God that you serve that has blessed you so abundantly. Titus replies that he sings of Rome, a city that has raised her head as high among other cities. Titus replies that he sings of Rome, capital R, O M E, Rome, comma, a city that has put red head as high among other cities, referring to the greatness of the Roman Empire at the time. A city, right? That has so I read a head as high among other cities. Referring to the greatness of the Roman Empire at the time. It is obvious that Titus must have visited the city of Rome recently. It is possible that Titus had visited the city of Rome recently. When asked why he visited Rome, Titus replies, freedom. When asked why he visited Rome, he replies, freedom. It is also reported that Titus had recently divorced his wife by name Galatia. And he divorced his wife by name Galatia. Okay? Galatia. Don't forget the, to do that line also. Let me write it. Otherwise, the spelling will not be complete. And so he became free to travel. Because without Galatia, he's able to save enough money and also have his personal time. Because without Galatia, he's able to save enough money and also have his personal time. Because you see, sometimes love can be daunting and tasking. So freedom helps him to travel. Freedom helps him to freedom from Galatia and our demands for money and time made it possible for Tartarus to travel to Rome, save enough money to travel to Rome. Melibos says that not only him had noticed his absence, but that even the pines, the springs, and the orchards were asking after him. Melibos says that not only him, as not only Melibos noticed his absence, noticed Titus' absence, but that even the pines, P I N E S, the springs and the orchards were asking after him. That is personifications. Because there's this one of the features of pastoral poetry is the depiction of animism through personification. Depiction of what? Animism through personification. 
Mimism through Nemism through personification. Nemism is the idea that the nature is alive, that nature is alive and active. They believe that nature is always alive and active, just like human beings. Nature is a living thing. And so, animism is usually depicted through personification, which is which was which was we find in the pines, the, the springs, and the orchard, asking after uh, Titus. Okay, that the, the the nature, the natural environment, also notices absence when it was not around. In this expression. The poet uses personification to give life to the pastoral milieu of the shepherds. In this expression, the poet uses personification to give life to the pastoral milieu of the shepherds. Milieu is spelled M I L I E U. E U. M I L I B U milieu. Tatarus tells of how the um, the god to whom he sacrifices twelve times in a year to Tatarus tells of how the god to whom he sacrifices twelve times a year. Told him to remain a shepherd and not go on exile. So the so being a shepherd is the best life, right? Being a shepherd is the best life. You guys should strive to be shepherds. It's the best life. That's what we we know from Titus' experience. That even the God that he serves has told him not to go to the city, which is as which is like going on exile. Leaving your home to the city is like going on exile. Okay? Because being a shepherd is the best life. Looking after other people. Looking after the sheep. Caring for the sheep is the best life. According to him, the God tells him, the God tells him, quote, feed swains, feed swains, feed swains, as, as the meta, uh, that's another name for the sheep. Feed swans, feed swans your oxen as of old. Continue to do what you've always done. Rear your bull. Unquote. That's what the God told him. Melibos expresses his happiness for Titus. Melibos expresses his happiness for Titus. And talks about how the land will continue to be his. And talks about how the land will continue to be his. And talks about how the land will continue to be his. How his ship will. How his ship will not. How his ship will not suffer any infection. How his ship will not suffer any infection. He calls Titus happy old man. He calls Titus happy old man. However, Melibos is living. However, Melibos is living, 
and he begins to wonder if he will ever set eyes on the countryside again. Melibus is going on exile, and he begins to wonder whether he will ever set sight, set sight, set his eyes on the countryside again. He declaims as follows. Declaims as follows. Shall I ever, long years hence, look again on my country's bound, on my humble cottage, with its turf clad roof? Shall I, long years hence, look amazed on a few years of corn, once my kingdom? Is a godless soldier to hold this world tal fallows, a barbarian these crops, see where strivers brought our unhappy citizens. Okay, I'll take that again. Shall I ever? Shall I ever Shall I ever, long years hence, look again on my country's bounds and my humble cottage with its turf clad roof? Shall I, long years hence, look amazed on a few years of corn once my kingdom? Is a godless soldier to hold this world tile follows? A barbarian these crops? See where strife has brought our unhappy citizens. Okay, there is space now. Shall I? Ever long years hence look again on my country's bound on my humble cottage because remember they live humble lives so they also live in humble environment humble cottage as his house with heats turf clad roof the roof is made of um, the, from objects from the natural environment okay Self clad roof, bash, shall I, long years hence, as many years from now, look amazed on a few years of corn once my kingdom because where he lives now is kingdom wonder whether i will ever see it again is a godless soldier a godless soldier that's a foreign soldier someone who does not hold the same values that he holds whether the person will now be the person to occupy this place is a gorgeous, a godless soldier to hold these well tied fallows because they have taken care of the environment and made it beautiful. Well tied fallows that have cultivated the land and made it beautiful. A barbarian, barbarian. A foreign soldier does not believe in his values. 
these crops see where see where strife has brought has brought uh, unhappy citizens. Okay? It's an exclamation to see that is frustration at the state of affairs in Rome, the Roman Empire at the time. Okay? Which had signs of cracks, signs of war, signs of disintegration. At this point, he commands his goods to move on in the journey out of the country. Boss. At this point, he commands his goods to move on in the journey out of the country. Tatarus words bring a clock one to an end. Tatarus words bring a clock one to an end. In what appears to be a soliloquy, in what appears to be a soliloquy, in what appears to be a soliloquy, soliloquy, he tells Melibos that he could still have spent the night in the country. He could still have spent the night in the country, noting with optimism the availability of fruits amidst the regular rhythm of shepherd's life. He's going to leave all of this behind. So he leaves a feeling of nostalgia as one is leaving all of these beautiful things behind. I'll take that again. He tells Melibus that he could have still spent the night in the country, noting with optimism the availability of fruits amidst the regular rhythm of shepherd's life. That are the normal things that shepherds do. Okay, I'll now move on to a clock three. Now move on to a clock three. I'm going to, to clock three. I'm selecting the point that I talk about. If you want to read the clock two, it is here. Starring Alexis. To clock three. But there's another aspect of the shepherd's life that I want to talk about. All right. So, Clock Three depicts a same competition between Menalcas and Demotis. Demotis. Clock Three depicts a same competition between Menalcas and Demotis. Clock Three depicts a same competition between Menarchus and Demetrius, with Parliament as the judge, with Parliament as the judge, with Parliament as the judge, with Parliament as the judge. In the end, in the end, Parliament declares the contest a draw. In the end, Parliament declares a con the contest a draw. That means the two shepherds have sung so well that nobody is a winner. In the end, Parliament declares the, the contest a draw. In his words, in his words, not mine betwixt such rivals to decide. Not mine betwixt such rivals to decide. 
not mine, betwixt such rivals to decide. You well deserve the hate, the hate. You well deserve the the heifer. That is the the price of the singing competition, which is likely a sheep. It is a sheep. All right. So does he? So does he? Not mind betwixt such rivals to decide. You well deserve the paper, so does he. He's speaking to Menarchus and Damitus. So in that in their songs, you want to know what the shepherds sang about in their songs? Both shepherds sing of their love and their experiences with their lovers. In their song, both shepherds, in their songs, both shepherds sing about their love and their experiences with their lovers. Sing of their love and their experiences with their lovers. Damitas, for instance, Damitas, for instance, sings of how Quote, Gay Galatia throws an apple at me. Gay Galatia throws an apple at me. Then hies to the willows, hoping to be seen. How gay. Galatia, that's happy Galatia, throws an apple at me. Then I to the willows, hoping to be Sing. So you can see that love play is going on there. Right? The meters, for instance, sings of how gay Galatia throws an apple at him and then runs to the woods, hoping that he will go and search for, for her. Okay? Why Menarchus sings of his love for Phoebus? Why Menarchus sings of his love for Phoebus? Phoebus. Why Menarchus sings of his love for Phoebus? And Amintas. Love for Phoebus and Amintas. Love for Phoebus and Amintas. He declares, me Phoebus loves. He declares, me Phoebus loves. Me Phoebus loves. They're saying Phoebus loves me. But that is, in poetry, that is called an inversion. Inversion. The reversal of the syntactic order of a sentence for poetic effect. Right? Instead of saying Phoebus loves me, it says me Phoebus love. Right? That's an invention in poetic terms. The reversal of the syntactic structures of a sentence for poetic effects. He declares me Phoebus loves. Me Phoebus loves. And then says that my dear Amintas comes and asks to me. My dear Amintas comes and asks to me. My dear Amintas 
comes an ask to me. Unquote. My dear Amentas comes an ask to me. Unquote. Initially, when Menachas asked Demetrius, Demetrius who owns the ship he finds with him, initially, when Menachas asks Demetrius who, who owns the ship he finds with him, he says that, Demetrius says that, initially when Menachas asks Demetrius who owns the ship he finds with him, or he finds him with, he, Demetrius, says that it belongs to, belongs to Egon, belongs to Egon, belongs to Egon, who handed it over to him lately, belongs to Egon, who handed it over to him lately, Wanted it over to him lately. Menachas then speaks of how unhappy a gun ship are because a gun abandons them to court Naira. So a gun is like a bad shepherd. Who does not balance his activities? He prefers courting his woman to taking care of his ship. Menachas then speaks of how unhappy a gun's ship are because he abandons them to court Naira. He binds them into a court, a woman, Naira. We move on to E clock five. On to E clock five. On to E clock five. The glove five is de devoted to the death of one of the shepherds, and how he is mourned by the other shepherds. So, a glove five can be seen as an instance of pastoral elegy, right? Good. In the sense of pastoral elegy. Glove 5 is devoted to the death of one of the shepherds and how he is mourned by the other shepherds, those alive. The two characters who discuss Daphne's death, the two characters who discuss Daphne's death are uh, Menalcas and Mopsus. So Daphne is the, the shepherd that has, has died. Daphne is, Daphne is the shepherd that has died. And Menalcas and Mopsus. Menalcas and Mopsus are seen discussing his demise. The two characters who discuss Daphne's death are Menachas and Mopsus. Menachas and Mopsus. Mopsus declares. Mopsus declares. Mopsus. M O P S U S. Mopsus declares. For Daphne slain wept all the names. For 
that means slain, wet, all the names. All the names. Names could refer to women or the children. All the names. It goes on to talk about how Damni's mother carries his body on her arm in her arms. This means that Daphne it means that Daphnis died young or died in his prime. In 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 pastoral elegy, the demise shepherd always dies young, or most most of the time dies in his prime, cut off. Which is why death is always called the cruel reaper. Does not know the cruel reaper does not know when to harvest a soul. So a soul should, a fruit should be harvested when it is ripe. But the cruel reaper will harvest it when it's not yet ripe, like young people, youth. Right? So darkness dies in his prime. When somebody dies in one's prime, that means the person dies young. All of, Dan, of, all of Daphne's deeds while alive are reported and praised in the poem. All of Daphne's deeds while alive are reported and praised in the poem. All of Daphne's deeds while alive are reported and praised in the poem. So this this uh, corroborates our earlier assertion that in pastoral elegy, the death the dead um, shepherd's actions while alive are. Are uh, eulogized? Are uh, eulogized? Are uh, praised? For instance, it is said of him that kind darkness lived, loved peace. Kind darkness, loved peace. That means it was a man of peace. Kind darkness, loved peace. Didn't look for anybody's trouble. Right? Didn't go around looking for trouble. Loved peace. That's what is said of him. Okay? He was kind and he was peaceful. He lived in peace with his fellow human beings. That's what he's known for. Daphne's immortality is recorded in these words that form his epitaph. Daphne's immortality. The, the, the shepherd does not die in vain. Death is a mere transition to eternity where we live forever, forever. Amen, somebody. Amen. I, Daphne, in the woods. I, Daphne's. I, Davmis, in the woods, from hence, in fame, aim to The stars exalted. I 
eye darkness in the woods, from hence in fame came to the stars exalted. He lives forever like the stars, shining up there as an example uh, for all of us. So in the space that is remaining, I need two persons to come out. We are going to read a class five. So the one person will be Menalcas and the other person will be Mopsus. It's not lengthy. Before we know it, we are done. So, Why, Mopsus, being both together met, you skill to breathe upon the slender feet. I need to sing in places. Do we not sit down? Here where the elm trees and the hazels lay. You are the elder. Tis for me to bide your choice, Minalcas. Whether now we seek, yon shed the, the quiver to the, to the changeful breeze, or the quail's shelter. Look you how the cave is with the wild pines closer overlaced. None but a mountain of this field of art can find with you. What if we also strive to, to have sing for Phobos? Do you first begin, good mother, whether minded to sing out of Phyllis and her love, or out of spring, or to fling out at the wonder of the game? While Tartarus watches all the great things. Nay, then, I will essay out, let I cave, on the green big trees, rings, ring playing by turns, and mark down the notes, then afterwards, bid you, Amitas, match them, if he can. As limbo willow to pale of the field, as lowly Celtic nerve to blow forth bright, so to my mind, a mentor's yield to you, but hold a while for the cage of the For Daphne's cruelly slain with all. For Daphne's. For Daphne's cruelly slain with all the, ne the nymphs. The nymphs. The nymphs. He hears us, hears with them witness, and he streams. Then she, his mother, but for Daphne is cruelly slain, wept all the names. Ye herself bear them witness, and ye streams, when she is mother, clasping his in her arms. The hapless body of the son she bear. Continue. To gods and stars, of time, what, of fitting what her plays. Then darkness to the cooling streams were none that, that drove the pasture frozen. Then oxen. no beast, oxen, then no beast, drank of the river, or would the grass blade touch. Nay, the wild brook and woods, then voice the roar. The roar. The roar of Afric, of Afric lions, lie mourning for, the, for thy death. Daphnis, it was thou father's yoke to focus car. It was thou father's yoke to focus uh, car. Armenian tigresses laid on the palm of revelers with the tender foliage which the bending spear ones as to trees the vine, his crown of glory, as to vines the grape, the hose to the head, the fruitful fields the corn. So the one glory of thine own art thou, when the fates took thee hence, then fell sir, and even Apollo left the country alone, where the plum barley grain, so oft we sow, there but wild oats and barren down your spring. And for tender violet and narcissus bright, thistle and prickly thorn of rare that hits. Gone. Now, O ye shepherd, strew the ground with leaves, and o'er the fountain draw a shoddy bell. So darkness to his memory bids be done and ray to a tongue. 
and writes thereon this verse, I, darkness in the woods, from hence in fame, and to the stars exalted, guardian ones of the faith flocks, myself more faith than they. Oh, so is thy song to me, for to lie, and slumber on the grass to bear wings, or to slake thirst for some sweet bubbling rain, and summer's heat, nor in the real alone, but with thy voice art thou, Christ hath born, round with thy master, second or to him. Yet will I, too, in turn, as best I may, sing thee a song and the stars of me. Thy darkness, darkness will start at dawn, from me to darkness in dawn. Than such a boon, what dearer could I be? The boy himself was worthy to be sung, and many a time had stepping come to me your singing praise. In darkling sheen we honor constant eye. Daphne stands wrapped before a leafy tree and sees beneath his feet, his feet the clouds and stars. Wherefore the woods and trees, pan, shepherd, fold, and diarrhed maidens, thrill with eager joy, nor woe with treacherous wild at self the flow, nor net the stars. Kind Daphne loveth these, on shorn mountains, the stars of two. Voices of gladness, eh, the very world, the very leaders, shout and say, a God, a God is he, Minalcos, Minalcos, be thou kind, propitious to thine own, low altar for twenty three, Daphne and the soulless twain, for sacrifice revealed and I for thee, two speakers here in the form, okay, of fresh new at home. And of rich olive oil to bow to the scent, and the wine god bowed in a bow hall, if full before the earth, and in the shade as harvest time to glad the festal hours, from glass of Arusian grape with poor sweet nectar. There, with all at my behest, shall Lichia, Dagon, and Demotus sing, and I'll perceive us emulate and dance, the dancing satyrs. This thy safety still, shall thou lack never, both when we pay the need, our yearly vows and beauty, lustral right, the field we have, long as the wide world. Shall love the mountain heights and fish the spring, wild bees and the fair, on the five and crickets feed on you. Thy name, thy praise, thy honor, thy endure, shall endure, even as to backwards and the service, so to be the swain his journey bow shall be, and thou there of thy death shall be turned How, how repay thee for a song so rare? For not the whispering south wind on its way so much delights me, nor wave smitten pitch, nor streams that raise adown their golden beds. Friend, this frail hemlock stalk is my which taught me, corridor with love as fire, for fair, for fair Alexis, A and B beside, who owns the flock that does But take you this shepherd's crook. Which how so hard he bent, antigens, then worthy to be loved, prevailed not to obtain with grass, you see, they fall not, Minalcas fashioned fair.